like I'm wearing this. It's a masking tutorial. Masking tutorial? Do you get it? You're just an idiot in a mask. Oh, you guys suck. Hey guys. Since I do get asked an increasing number of questions about the more fundamental concepts of After Effects, I've decided to create a number of short videos just to cover these basic topics. So if you're just starting out in After Effects, or maybe you need a small refresh on some of these topics, then these videos are for you. Today I'm going to cover masking, what it is, why it is so essential to almost any visual effect you'll ever create, and how you can do it inside of Adobe After Effects. All visual effects work on the basic principle of compositing multiple layers of footage together. Now, if you simply place two clips on top of each other, only the top layer would be visible because it would obscure any layers beneath it. However, you can apply masks to the top layer to define which areas are visible and thus, by cutting out certain areas, the bottom layers will show through. Masks are very versatile. You can use them to add or subtract parts of a layer. You can smooth them out, you can alter the opacity, and like anything else in After Effects, you can animate them. Masks are a fundamental tool, and even with little effort, you can create great looking effects like clone yourself. <laughs> now, let's have a look at how you can use masks inside of Adobe After Effects. I have a video here that I used in my After Effects explosion tutorial. Now, let's assume you liked the shot, but you really wanted to get rid of the bucket and the cardboard in the background. This is very easy to do with masks. For this, you will need a second clip or simply a photo of the same scene without the elements you want to remove. After I was done filming and had removed the cardboard and the bucket, I took this photo. Simply drag this element into your composition and place it on top of your base footage. Then reveal the opacity property of the layer by pressing the T key on your keyboard when the layer is selected. I'm going to lower it a little bit just so I can see the layer beneath it. To create a mask, you can either use predefined shapes like rectangles and circles or you can use the pen tool to draw any shape you like. Ensure that your top layer is selected, then click on the pen tool and draw a mask around all the elements you want to remove. If you click and drag as you place the points, you will see the Bezier curve handles appear. You can adjust these handles to add smooth curves to your mask. For now, however, I'm going to undo those points and just use straight lines. Make sure you close the mask by placing the end point of the shape on top of the start point. If you now increase the opacity of the masked layer, the cardboard and bucket will be gone. If you hide the bottom layer, you can clearly see which parts of the top layer have become invisible due to our mask. You can show or hide the white grid by toggling the transparency grid button. Reveal the mask we just created by selecting the top layer and pressing the M key. Alternatively, you can expand the little twisty on the layer. Each mask has a number of properties. The most important is the mask mode, which is set to add by default. This defines how the mask will be applied. If you change it to subtractive, the contents of the mask will be removed and the rest of the layer will become visible. You can have any number of masks on a single layer, each with their own properties. Some of these mask properties only apply if you have multiple masks on the same layer. For example, the intersect mask mode will only show the parts of a layer where masks are overlapping. The mask path is the outline of your mask as defined by the points and their connecting lines. You can animate this property by clicking on the stopwatch icon next to it. This will create a keyframe, locking in the current mask shape at this point in time. If you now go back a little bit in your timeline and change the mask path, a second keyframe will be created. The mask shape will be interpolated between these two keyframes. We will use all of this in a moment, but for now I will disable the keyframes by unticking the stopwatch icon. The mask feather defines how smooth the edges of the mask are. This is very useful for blending masked elements with the rest of your scene. I will leave the feathering at around 8 pixels to avoid any hard edges. The mask opacity defines how strong the mask will be applied to the layer, and the mask expansion property is used to expand or contract the shape of our mask. Now let's do something actually useful with these properties. When I play the entire video with our masked element that cover up the cardboard box and the blue bucket, we'll run into a problem as I walk out of the shot on the right hand side. The mask element cover up my legs. There are a number of ways to fix this, but since this is a masking tutorial I thought, hey why not use masks to fix this? Go to the position in the timeline when the masked out elements start overlaying on your actor or moving object and enable the stopwatch on the mask path property. When all vertices of a mask are displayed as solid squares, you can simply drag the mask around. You can ALT click on the mask to get into this mode. Click outside of the mask and all vertices will turn to circles. Now you can drag individual vertices around. 
Start adjusting the mask frame by frame to fit tightly around the moving elements so as not to cover it up. Notice that a number of grey keyframe indicators are created in your timeline. You can move forward and backwards a single frame by using the page up and page down keys on your keyboard. Now, the cardboard and the bucket start showing up between my arm and my torso, but don't worry about that for now, we'll add a few more masks soon to cover those up. Once you've used your mask to cover up what you can, you can simply move it off screen in the last keyframe and leave it there. Next, add any additional masks you need to the layer. Again, give them the required amount of feathering to make them sit nicely in the scene and animate their mask path. I like to animate them to come on screen just as they are needed, in this case, just as the cardboard becomes visible to my left. Once you've finished animating all the masks you need to cover up the desired elements, your shop will be complete and you will have learned how to use masks in Adobe After Effects. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and as always please leave any comments, questions or suggestions in the section below. And go check out my new Surface Studio Facebook page where I will post more frequent updates, some behind the scenes stuff and other random tips and tricks. Until next time, I will see you later. So now it's okay, now I can wear it, right? Cool.